Hey everybody, this is my first night doing this, so I don't have funny things to say to the other comedians, but you guys have all kicked ass, so thank you. Um, I used to be a bookseller uh, at Pasadena at the Colorado uh, Barnes & Noble, and um, it, I was a cashier, but they call it bookseller because they want it to seem like it's some sort of 18th century French boutique. And we don't get a lot of weird people at the bookstore because it turns out that the clientele for buying books is not the same clientele for loving meth. And so it's a really different audience. But sometimes we'll get like the crazy gray-haired ladies or the kids fucking in the adult erotica section. And I have to stop them and it's awkward. But this one time I'm behind the counter and this guy comes up to me and in my head he's wearing like full body overall, no shirt, straw coming out of the mouth and uh, just total country. I'm sure he's just wearing a shirt, but I mean, it looked country. And he puts down uh, onto the table a book by George Bush and then one by Bill O'Reilly and you have one by Ann Coulter. And he looks at me and I'm just like, oh, it's, oh, it's one of these. Okay, don't engage, just don't engage. And he comes up and he's like, you know why I'm getting these books, right? Uh, no, sir, I don't want to know why you're getting these books. Because you can't trust them. And I was like, um, I, the first thing I said was, uh, okay. And he's like, you, you know who you can't trust, right? And I said, I, I don't know. And if I'd stopped there, I would have been fine. But I went with who. <laughs> and I just, fuck my dick. Oh, this is going to be bad. And he looks around, and he does that, like, how every racist joke starts. And behind him is a giant mountain of an African-American fellow. Giant. And he looks back at me, and he goes, the blacks. <laughs> no accent, no di perfect diction. It's like he went through a really sudden, really racist My Fair Lady. Like, all of a sudden, just perfect. And he goes... The blacks. And my face does that thing where it forgets how to be a face because it's so... Uh, 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 I, I, I just make that noise for like I, I, an hour. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And uh, so he gets off. I was like, any more stuff that you'd like to say, you can say to my manager. And he's like, okay, black lover. Which, for the record, super am. <laughs> and uh, then... Uh, the guy behind him comes up and I was like, I'm so sorry. He's like, it's okay, we're just gonna kick his ass in the street later. I'm like, oh shit. I get home, turn on the TV, a race riot has broken out in Pasadena. He's like, oh shit. Uh, one last thing. You know how your parents lie to you? And not like the big ones like, we love you or you're not adopted. But like the small ones that stick in your brain and fuck you over later. Like one time my dad told me that the meaty part of artichoke is chicken. And I never really thought about it because I don't fucking eat artichoke every day. And so like I'm 15, I'm at my friend's house and his mom is like, hey, would you like some artichoke we cooked to last night? And I was like, no, I don't like reheated chicken. And she just looks at me for like an eternity and goes, okay, but would you like some artichoke? And it was at that time that my 15 year old brain that knows biology and plants was like, mother fucker! And so I go to my dad, I was like, dad, what's the deal? And he's like, I don't remember that one, but I've told you lots of lies, like lots of lies. And I was like, oh shit. So now there's like a minefield of lies that are gonna make me look like a retard at future events. Like I'm talking to people and it's like, oh yeah, no, pork is made out of snakes. So, oh, fuck. <laughs> anyway, that's my time, I think, so thanks. Keep it going for Zach Seymour, everybody. Yeah.